Father, we thank you for this day. It is the day that you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your love, Lord. We praise you for your loving kindness. We thank you for your tender mercies. We thank you for your grace. Thank you, Lord. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. We don't have enough tongues to praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. We bless your name. We thank you that you are great and you're greatly to be praised. There's none other like you. Hallelujah. You're glorious. Hallelujah. You are mighty God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We bless your name. Thank you for your loving kindness, Lord. Thank you for your grace to those who can't be with us, Lord. But thank you that the, the being healed ones are healed and whole, and they are manifesting your glory. In the name of Jesus, they're walking out their healing that you've already performed, and we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the praise. We thank you, Lord, that you keep us safe. We pray for the governments all over the world, Lord. We pray for the government over the United States of America. We pray for the government here in our city, in our state. In Jesus' name, lead and guide them. Oh God, in Jesus' name, open the eyes of their understanding that they may know what your will is concerning us. Keep us safe in Jesus' name from hurt, harm, and danger, seen and unseen, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you that each household represented and on the way is blessed in the name of Jesus with your, uh, with your abundance in the name of Jesus. And we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. We say thank you. Have your way. Have your way today, Lord. Heal, save, deliver, set free in Jesus' name. Be glorified. Be magnified in the name of Jesus. And we celebrate you. And we th say thank you in Jesus' name. Scripture this morning is from Lamentations, chapter 3, verses 21, 22, and 23. I'm reading from the King James Version. This I recall to mind, therefore have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great, great, great is thy faithfulness. Hallelujah. May God add a blessing to the reading of his holy word. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. We're trying to continue to lift up the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And this is a simple old song that says, I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad that Jesus lifted me. Glory, hallelujah, Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad. Jesus lifted me. Glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. Jesus lifted me. Satan had me bound. Jesus lifted me. Satan had me bound. Jesus lifted me. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. From sin and shame. Oh, Jesus lifted me. From sin and shame. From sin and shame. Oh, Jesus lifted me. From sin and shame. From sin and shame. Jesus lifted me. Glory, hallelujah. Oh, Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad. Jesus lifted me. Glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. When I was a sinner, Jesus lifted me. Jesus lifted me from sin and shame. Jesus lifted me. Glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Jesus lifted me. 
lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. Glory, hallelujah. Bless thee, O Lord, with the heart of thanksgiving. 
with a heart of thanksgiving. I will serve the Lord with a heart of thanksgiving. With a heart of thanksgiving, I will bless thee. I will bless thee, O Lord. With a heart of thanksgiving. With a heart of I will bless thee, O Lord, with the heart of thanksgiving. I will bless thee, O Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Please stand if you're able and worship with us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We sing praises to your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, praises to your name. Hallelujah. Oh,
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise your holy name. Hallelujah. Magnificent and holy is thy name. There's so much noise in our environment. Sometimes we just need to be quiet. Thank you. And just sit in his presence. That's where all the answers are. Yes. That's where all the peace is. Yes. That's where all the joy is. Thank you. Hallelujah. Just in his presence. Listen and allow him to speak to you. He's just waiting to give us answers and solutions Thank you. for every situation. He's a God that talks to us yes. because he loves us. He loves us. Thank you, Lord. We don't have to go this alone. He wants to speak to us, but we have to be quiet and in his presence. Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You may be seated. This morning we're going to have some more poetry readings with Minister Jesse Hammock, Minister Janelle Rogers, Minister Pat Standifer, and Minister Linda Tucker. Good morning, everyone. There 
are many surprises in life, ups and downs, twists and turns. And some are large, some are small. We call them the storms of life. And our own Joyce Wilbur wrote a poem called The Storms of Life, and it ministers to me. I hope that it will minister to you. Thank you. Storms of life blow through, uprooting objects in their path, but storms don't come to stay. Storms come to pass. The words may, the winds may blow and howl and shake us to the core. We must keep our eyes on Jesus and trust him evermore. The trials we face in life will work out for our good. If we love the Lord and obey him as we should, he is with us in the storm, shielding us from rain, protecting us from harm, delivering us from pain. So when you're in a storm, you are not alone. The Lord is walking with you. He will see you safely home. And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Mark 4, 39. When storms come, do they come to stay? No. What do they do? They pass. They come to pass. Is that good news? Yes. Yes. Good news. Praise God. I was told a few minutes ago that I was supposed to say something funny. So, <laughs> since I wasn't told by Jessie she was supposed to call me, she didn't. So anyway, let's laugh anyway. Make up a laugh. <laughs> Just laugh. Praise God. Okay. Praise God. The, uh, the poem that I'm going to read this morning is Be Faithful. Amen. And when you think about being faithful, you think about the word of God which says, without faith, it is impossible to do what? Please, Please God. God. And we're to walk by what? Faith. And not by Amen. sight. Praise God. And Hebrews 11.1 1 says, now faith is what? The evidence of things not seen. You are so smart. I'm going to give everybody an A+. Plus. Right. Now, be faithful. You must be faithful to the heavenly vision. Cast off doubt. Forsake indecision. Be consistent in prayer. Stay focused and stable. Expecting results. For our God is able. Mm -hmm. Be faithful in giving and expect to receive a harvest of blessings if you only believe. Mm -hmm. Seek first the kingdom above earthly things. Seek the king of the kingdom and the life that he brings. Be faithful in serving, but not for acclaim. Use your talents and skills to lift up his name. Be faithful to God in all that you do. His unfailing love proves he's faithful to you. Matthew 25, 21. We all want to hear this. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Amen. As you know, life for me ain't been no crystal stair. 
I've been waiting on the Lord. And sometimes it just don't seem fair. Then someone came to me and said, while you are waiting, that woman was Joyce Wilbur talking about while you waiting. Well, I'm going to read this poem she gives me. While you are waiting, wait in faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of what we do not see. Waiting in faith brings victory. While you are waiting, since you are waiting, keep your focus on God's word. Stay the course. Walk by faith and not by sight. Expect what is wrong to be made right. Amen. While you are waiting, listen to God's voice. The Holy Spirit will manifest the things to come. Refuse to fear. Hearken to his voice. Incline your ear. While you are waiting, walk in peace. Keep your composure. Remain undisturbed, joyful in spirit, Patient in affliction, confident that God has charged, has changed the situation. <laughs> Don't despair. Don't give up. Stand your ground. Walk in joy. Celebrate. You will be glad you chose to wait. Psalm 27, 14, wait on the Lord and be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Now that's God's love. Linda Tucker, tell us more about God's love. Something that we all need in our life is God's love. God's son hanging on a tree sacrificed for you and for me. The sinless lamb to the slaughter bled for countless sons and daughters. Blessed for our iniquity, bruised for our iniquities the perfect expression of love for me. God's son died on a cross so my soul would not be lost. Hallelujah. Establishing a place in heaven for his own so we can together, so we can gather around his throne. God's love is so pure and kind, removes diseases of the body and mind. One, one cannot comprehend just how far his love extends. Amen. Amen. I'm going to read the announcements today. Um, a part of God's plan for prosperity is scheduled slash planned rest. To help facilitate this, all classes taught by Pastor Johnson will be furloughed for November and December. They will reconvene during the week of January 10th, 2022. Prayer is Monday through Friday, 10 through 11 a.m. The phone number is 1-712-432-1500. The access code is 628 703. Bible study. Oh. Bible study has been canceled. Prayer has been canceled. Bible study classes will continue through November 30th, 2021, 
The classes will reconvene Tuesday, January 4th, 2022. Bible studies are all on Zoom. The meeting code is 889-022-7357. Anger management is 11 through 12 a.m. noon. The story of Christianity is 12 noon to 1 p.m. And shattering your strongholds is 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. Thursdays is comforted, a support group for people who have lost a loved one. The loss can be recent or in the past. The next meeting is Thursday, um, November 18th, 6 through 7 p.m. The phone number is 1605-562-8400. The access code is 674-9637. And Saturdays is Men Talk every Saturday of the month except the last one, 11 through 12.30 p.m. The phone number is 1605-562-8401, and the access code is 292-9802. Thank you. God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. That is so good. I'm so glad we're giving God the praise. That makes us, we're excited for the announcement I'm going to make today. I am standing here as part of the church council to invite you to be a part of the building fund. Amen? Amen. The building fund has been established for the repairs of our building, which are retrofitting the northeast corner of our sanctuary building, replacement of piping in the water main line, replacement of floor and toilet in men's bathroom, and replacement of toilet in the women's bathroom. The present, the present estimate is $50,000, and our insurance company cannot pay that because the, the repairs are pre-existing. Therefore, we are calling on our Shabbat family, who just gave a shout out to God, family, friends, and visitors to contribute to this endeavor. The ways to contribute are, use the church envelopes indicating building fund, Use the online LASFC.org or mail to Post Office Box 43A109, LA 90043, and the water jug in front of the church. Thank you so much for demonstrating your love. Amen. All right. Because uh, a lady prophesied to me about my son and went on and on. And I said, I'm not married. I have two daughters. I don't have a son. Never had a miscarriage, so don't tell me it's somebody that went to heaven. I said, it's not accurate. She had a meltdown and just went off. Until you find out that you're not perfect, you're going to make more mistakes than ever in the spirit realm, okay? The enemy, one of his plaguing thoughts is you made a mistake. And then cover it. Wrong. You're going to make mistakes. I'm just talking about in life in general, you know? And learn to say, Lord, I thank you. Because a mistake, when you find out, can be advantageous. How? Because you learn. It's <clears throat> scripture. Jesus learned by the things he suffered. Okay? So all this gunk from the devil is pride when somebody can't or, or indicate something. I'm going to start off my sermon also by saying this. When I was a child and my parents would correct me, they would say, I now say thank you. And I couldn't figure out why I had to say thank you when they wouldn't let me do what I wanted to do. Why would, what, what, why would I thank you? And they said, do you understand my job is to keep you safe? Our job is to keep you uh, in the goal that God has for you. So we're not gonna tell you something wrong. Our job is to speak those things that will cause you to prosper. But I would come home, because I, I was saying, it, well, everybody else, uh, they, I don't get to do nothing. Sh shut up all that complaining. 
and thank me. We're talking about thanksgiving. Thank God for correction. There are people I've, I've spoken to concerning the word. It may be a correction. And they immediately say, I'm leaving the church. It's because you, you, you don't even know what my job is. I'm supposed to watch over sheep, yeah. not see you go under the fence and say, oh, well, they're going to catch it when they get to the freeway. <laughs> uh, they'll come back in a body bag. No. A warning. Start thanking God for warning. Start thanking God for correction. The Bible said he loves who he corrects. It's not love when you see someone killing themselves and you just, hmm, that's their problem, okay? Sometimes people say, I don't want to bring correction because they may go off on me. Well, you just bless them. I heard a man say something was so beautiful yesterday. He said, when there's opposition in your life, and I'm still talking about Thanksgiving, when there's opposition in your life, when there are opposing forces, when there's persecution, when there's trials, when there are attacks, immediately you know you have the victory. He said, the way you know is when you forgive. If you do, because once you forgive, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. But there's a weapon that you can form against yourself, and that's unforgiveness. And you kill yourself, destroy yourself with unforgiveness. The enemy's attack has no bite when you forgive on the spot. No bite. Understand, this is something to give thanks for. When you know this and start acting in it, I hear people say, so-and-so upset me. Nobody can upset you if you're doing things God's way. I don't like what they said. So people have free will. They can say what they want to say. The character of God is if they come to crucify you, persecute you, whatever, your friend that wants to cut the ear off, rebuke them by putting that ear back on and speaking healing to that person. People act ugly because they're on ugly assignments. They need you to pray for them. How does somebody know that they're sick? They have symptoms, attacks on you, ugly things, all this, are symptoms of sickness. God doesn't bring sickness. You speak your spiritual depth. You also speak your spiritual inadequacy, your lack of relationship with God is in your speaking and your actions. Coming into Christ and asking him to be Lord of your life is a wonderful thing, and he does that. He makes you Savior. I mean, you make him Savior, but he's still not Lord. Until you obey him. You're still doing your own thing. You're still walking in the flesh. You're saying what you want to say because your mouth's not tamed. You're running it. I'm talking about Thanksgiving today. The only thing that gives us truth on how to have success in this life is the word of God and our doing it. Did you know the scripture says there are two kinds of people that hear the word of God? One kind of person hears and they leave just like they came. No better because they don't mix it with faith. The other kind hears the word of God and says, hmm, I'm going to do that. I'm going to apply that. When I was a child, my mother would look at me. She'd say, oh, oh, there it goes. She said, I see you thinking. She said, you think you're fixing to say something. She said, but uh, 
I can't keep you from thinking, Luida. She said, but I am going to keep it from coming out of your mouth. Don't you dare. I said, but, but I have some feelings. She said, cap it. I said, well, I have an opinion. She said, shut up. I'd breathe hard. She said, you don't have a respiratory ailment. She said, breathing hard is dishonoring to me. How many times have we dishonored people because we let them know with our attitude and our actions and all of that, that we don't know God. We don't know him. You've got to know him in the power of his resurrection. That means his character should be implemented in our lives. Everything you say is being weighed. Where did I get that from? The word of God. Life and death is in the power of your tongue. And you are very, very, very much under his scope. And you make your life what it is, and you make your life what the outcome is by what you think and what you follow and, and what you speak. Uh huh. Right. Yeah. Just keep on thinking. You got to give somebody a piece of your mind. Keep on here. Somebody sent me a little cartoon, verbal cartoon, and it said, I sure hope Golden Corral is open on Thanksgiving because I done got in it with everybody. So therefore, they're not invited anywhere to dinner, you see. Huh? What I'm looking at, Stan? Oh, okay. Thank you. All right, so we're going to understand that we have to decree things that are in line with the word. Look at Isaiah chapter 65. You know, I'm not having success yet in this uh, stand, staying still, and it's going up and down, and I don't know what to do about it. I think this is not the stand that I use. This is plastic. The one I use is metal, and it seems to be stronger. What am I looking at, Isaiah 65? Yes. Put the mic down. You. What are we going to do? There's another stand that is faithful. There's another stand that is loyal. There's a committed stand. Faithful and loyal. This is a back. <laughs> Thank you. 65, Isaiah. Oh, this is wonderful. Thank you so much. He sure knows how to blow a horn. <laughs> oh, yeah. Praise God. We're so thankful. Isaiah 65 and verse 16. Uh -huh. Whoever is blessed in the land will be blessed by the God of truth. Whoever swears in the land will swear by the God of truth. For former troubles will be forgotten and hidden from my sight. All right. You want to be blessed by the Lord. Okay? Let's go back to uh, verse... Um, 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 eight. The Lord says this, as the new wine is found in a bunch of grapes, and one says, don't destroy it, for there's some good in it, 
so I will act because of my servants and not destroy them all. Look at the, the declaration that someone speaks and God hears it and answers it and doesn't let destruction come. Do you speak to things that are dying and tell them to live? You have that dominion. We have so much to give thanks for that we don't even think about. Dominion in Christ, you know, speak. Uh, in, on Sister Roger's prayer line, Stephanie gave a, a testimony about her speaking life in a death-filled situation, and that thing turned around. All day long, you should be decreeing, and God hears. We're workers together with Christ. Somebody said, I wish there were miracles in my life. I said, start speaking miracles. You know, are you waiting for God to do miracles? He gave you dominion. He said, the believers will lay hands on the sick, and what? They shall recover. If the believers don't know who they are, and I sure hope you feel better. Oh, we'll see. Most people don't get rid of that chronic disease. Saying all that stuff. Decree. Get, let's give thanks to God for dominion. Hallelujah. Um, verse 13. Therefore, this is what the Lord says. My servants will eat, and you will be hungry. My servants will drink, but you will be thirsty. My servants will rejoice, but you will be put to shame. My servants will shout for the joy from a glad heart, but you will cry out from an anguished heart, and you will lament out of a broken spirit. You'll leave your name behind as a curse for my chosen ones, and the Lord God will kill you. That means permit you the destruction that you walked in in your flesh, but he'll, he will give his servants another name. And that's where we come into whoever is blessed in the land will be blessed by God. We choose, don't you see? He's talking about his servants. He's his servants. Just being saved is not enough. He told you to occupy what? Until he comes, you're not occupying if you have a wait and see attitude. Let me see what's gonna happen. Even if you're saying, well, the will of the Lord be done. He told you that his will was for you to lift up his name. His will is for you to lay hands on the sick. His will is for you to cast out demons. I'm sitting looking at TV at de demon activity in other states, and I'm just binding and breaking the power of it. There's no distance in prayer. It could be in another nation, wherever. There's no distance in prayer. Thanksgiving Day, it's a thankful day when you find out who you are. It's a thankful day when you learn that your mouth can parrot what God says. All right, it can speak the de de decrees. It can decree things. Jesus operated as a man on earth. Amen. He is our example. He showed us what we can do as men. We need to identify with him. John 14, 10 and 12 says, the works that I do, believers shall also do. The works that I do, believers shall also do. When you put yourself in a situation where you have resigned in spiritual warfare and you're hoping that the devil leaves you alone, it's just like I love to bring this up at least uh, annually. <laughs> Back in the day when Jesse and I were teenagers, there was a dance, a, a song out called oh. Too Weak to Fight. And Jesse could do it. That dance that went to it. Jesse, can you show us? <laughs> Come on. Yes, you can, sweet chaplain Jesse. Show us. Come on. Let's have an illustrated. I want this on film. Are you getting it, Rob? <laughs> Rob? Okay. It's it. 
Come into the aisle. <laughs> Rob, is she on the? OK, now turn around. You can stand right there. OK. This is the way the song went. You know I'm under contract not to sing, so ignore that it's off to us. OK. It said, too weak to fight, baby. Too weak to fight, <laughs> baby. Too weak to fight. Too weak to fight. Too weak to fight. Thank you, Jesse. <laughs> OK. I want that to stay in your mind. When you start listening to the devil in this crazy spiritual warfare that you're supposed to have victory in. So I told you this man said, if I am attacked viciously, I don't have to think the second time about it. I have the victory. It is automatic when I forgive. Amen. But if I forget and I don't forgive, I will kill myself. Amen. With bitterness and anger and all that, and it'll leak through everything in your life. Yeah. Learn how to forgive on the spot. Yeah. Matthew 5, says, when people attack you, say ugly things, vicious, whatever. You're supposed to do something. What are you supposed to do? We're talking about Thanksgiving. You don't have anything to be thankful for if you're not doing the word. What, okay. Kenneth knows. What are we supposed to do, Kenneth? Love that person. What else? Bless that person. What else? Do good toward them. And what else? Pray for them. How many of you are enacting this? Period. I'm just going to treat them with a long-handled spoon. That's right. That's right. Oh. Arms get, get thee behind me, Satan. <laughs> Attacking me. You know, you better get into this word and find out who you are. Amen. As Christ was, so ought you to be. Amen. I understand he hung on that cross for each one of us who was guilty and condemned to death. And now you can't forgive? You are a pawn in Satan's hand to destroy you. To destroy you. Well, I, I said, um, I said, I just, uh, just check them off the list. Nothing in that scripture tells you to check them off the list. Go after them and bless them. Amen. Go after them. Pray for them. Go after them. Do good to them. Amen. Ask God, what can I do for them? Mm -hmm. Some of you have problems because folks don't obey you. Bless them to obey God. Amen. Why does somebody have to do what you want them to do? Mm -hmm. who, who are you? Children of God don't walk like that. I've heard people over and over down through the years tell me things like, I, I mean, just, oh, so-and-so had a such-and-so-and-so. -and -so -and -so. Oh, they left the church a long time ago. You talk to them? I said, yeah, but they left the church. Listen, folks, do you have an abandonment issue? People come and go. I didn't send them here in the first place. The Holy Ghost draws. Did you know that you're here because you want to be? Do you know the minute you don't want to be, you won't be here? It's called choice. Do you know I'm here because I want to be? And I better stay here if I know what's good for me Amen. until the Lord calls me home, releases me. Do you understand what I'm saying? People have choice, and their choice may not be your choice. That's what Mother was telling me. Stop thinking. Shut up. Amen. 
even a testimony. When someone gives a testimony, can you rejoice? Or do you have to have one upmanship? See, we have so much to be thankful for when we learn to obey God. Can you imagine they said they got a one room? <clears throat> I got 15 bedrooms and 19 bathrooms and one of my little playhouses. And I got so-and-so and so-and-so. We're not healed. We're not ready. Narcissism, it's still all about you. You can't rejoice with somebody. You got to tell them, but I've got more. My mother used to say, hide those cookies, Lou Ida. I said, why? She said, children sometimes play this game, and adults do too. Na, 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 na. Oh. I've got seven, mm, seven cookies. How many do you, you don't have any? You don't have any? We're sick. That is sick. You ought to be saying, here, take half. Sharing, mm -hmm. but we want glory. You're back in the garden with Satan. Mm -hmm. I want to be worshiped. Look what I have. There was a lady that made a great complaint because a little boy that I was playing checkers with, teaching him, and the second time we played, he won. And she told me, she said, you could have won. There are some things I know you saw and you didn't jump. I said, I wanted him to experience winning and I wanted him to experience implementing the things that I've taught him. And after a while, he'll see those places that he could have jumped. At lunchtime, the lady said, I never could have done that. I just don't know how you could do that because I just have to win. You don't win until you exhibit biblical principles. Rejoice with somebody that rejoices. Then all day I told people, he won the checker game. He beat the, the teacher? I said, yes. He won the checker game. He came in the next day. I'm playing checkers at, at, at recess. I'm playing. He was the king, you know. And he played and he played and he played. And when he got out of kindergarten, I heard from some other teachers, boy, he can whip anybody. God lets us have baby steps. And we're so excited. It's just like when a baby walks. Everybody claps and people video these first steps. But after a few steps, what does the baby do? They fall. Do you call them? You ain't walking. You look at you. You fell. <clears throat> Give thanks when you get the concepts that God has given you. How to walk and keep peace. How to shut up. The Bible says that when you can control this tongue, you can control the whole body. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just had to say it. You got a had to say it problem. Start practicing a holy hush, a holy shahush, a holy hush. All right. We've got opportunities that God has given us. Uh, we go from death to life. Proverbs 18.21 tells us, that life and death is in the power of our words. Amen. Do you have to tell somebody? You know, I remember when you messed up. You got to keep that before their face. Do you have to do that? No. Do you have to? Uh-uh. God is a reconciler. You're supposed to say what he says. Until God tells you, you sure have jacked up your life. Don't you say it to anybody else. 
He's a reconciler. Your hair is gray now. You still doing that. You haven't learned from your childhood. I don't care if you use Clairol. You still haven't learned. You know, we we say ugly things. God wants us to start rejoicing over people, and if you're going to rejoice over somebody, it's because they are hearing from God. People that need correction can't receive it, especially when they don't believe you love them. Amen? When they don't believe you love them. All right. So I have a, a, a few things. I don't know if you have a paper and pen. <clears throat> but when the enemy talks to you, don't sit silently and listen. You have to tell him truth. If the enemy speaks in your head and says, now you know you can't figure this out. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 through 12 tells you, I'm going to direct your paths. I'm going to direct your steps. I'm going to show you how to figure it out. If you're saying, I'm too tired. Matthew chapter 11, verse 20 says, I'm going to give you rest. Expect rest. As long as you keep saying what the devil says, I can't, and I'm too tired, I'm too weary, I don't, I can't do it, you won't, because death is in the power of your tongue. Death to your energy is in the power of the tongue. Are you saying, this thing is impossible? God says, all things are possible. Luke 18, 27. You begin to speak that. You begin to speak that. All things are possible. Did you say nobody loves me? That's such an insult to God. Yes, Lord. Nobody cares. Like he's nobody. John 3, 16, he said, I love this whole world so much that I gave my life. And that's you included. Uh, you see anybody else lay down their life for you? No. Mm -mm. He needs to be honored in all situations. And the last one, I am afraid. 2 Timothy 1, 7, I have not given you the spirit of fear. Why don't you cast fear out? You're a believer. That's what you're supposed to do. Do you take authority over it in your own life? When the enemy says, now this is that and that's it. And ooh. The devil is a boogeyman. Amen. Rebuke him in the name of Jesus. God hasn't given me this spirit. I'm not entertaining the spirit of fear. Amen. I've got the power of God, the Holy Spirit. I've got love and I have soundness of mind. With God, all things are possible. Amen. Only believe. If you're here today and you haven't asked Jesus into your heart to be Lord and Savior of your life, I want you to know, hallelujah, Good word. that he's a, he, he, thank you, Jesus, for your word. He's a loving God, and he has plans for you. We need to find out what those plans are. We can go day in and day out and amble along in our unbelief because we don't know God's plan. Amen. But I can put it con concisely, his plan is that you magnify his name. Amen. His plan is that you glorify him. And when you do, everything is going to uh, move out the way. As long as you are self-focused, you're wrong-focused. That's what the enemy wants you to do. Be self-focused. Amen. When you're Christ-focused, word-focused, you're going to eat the good of the land. Is there anyone?